I've made a comfortable spot at the end of my living room and I've um, managed to set up my Bible on um, a music stand or lectern which I find very a very nice way to read because I don't have to hold the book or pour out or bend over it at a table and I've been reading from uh, I read the 15th chapter of Exodus this morning and I find so much of it to be just speaks to 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 me and to the present time that's what I see more and more in the Bible not just the historical context which I understand to some extent now but particularly the relevance for current times um, verse 26 uh, is one of the verses that struck me if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and wilt do that which is right in his sight and wilt give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth thee That's quite a powerful idea, and it's because the word diseases is used. Um, I mean, the, the main reference of a disease, if it could be called that, would be the destruction of the Egyptian army in the Red Sea, which had just occurred. But there was also the plagues that preceded those that um, final event so it seems that diseases refers to all of those things and we do understand today what a disease is and anybody who in the church I noticed they were always very quick to point out that um, because a man is has become ill cannot possibly mean that that he is in some way not favored by God but it must be the result of some really random circumstance and they would also point out that children can become very ill without and presumably in a sinless state I think this would be the the understanding but of course children are not sinless and none of us are sinless actually because we carry original sin so that would be one objection to that understanding and the other objection is that we are all to some extent ill we are all suffering from ailments of one sort or another and the main problem is that we don't diagnose them correctly and we allow them to become life-threatening but our, ail our our basic ailments are are you know disobedience and um, incorrect lifestyle you see this is what sin is ultimately we we, we get it mixed up with morality and morality is a man-made concept morality and ethics these are the philosophers that have brought these ideas in but if we think about sin um, if the idea of cleaning up one's life now since I have come to these understandings I have started actually to clean up my life and all I'm doing is making every action more conscious and so I have to act thoughtfully in every moment and one consequence of that has been that my house is gradually becoming absolutely spotless I'm amazed at it but I can't I can no longer tolerate um, my 
disorderly conduct in terms of tidiness and personal hygiene and the thoughts that pass through my mind and the practices that I engage in in the day. I'm not trying to be good, as it were, in any moral sense. I'm just trying to be efficient. Because the more one is efficient in one's actions and thoughtful and meditated, rather than you know, deciding what the action will be, I'm just following the spirit then the more energy that I have to devote to, to God and to my worship of God and to enjoying the beauty of the earth which overwhelms me continually. So Yes, I mean, it's removing sin from one's life, certainly. And one aspect of removing sin is um, is paying careful attention to diet, which is one probably the main source of the illnesses that we have. Eating incorrectly and eating too much. not And not fasting, avoiding fasting, which is really a biblical principle. Um, fasting is a very important part of our practices. It's not that you should fast, but you should certainly consider it, I think, you know, uh, and look at the potential benefits. And once they've been understood, I think not to fast is really disobedience. And I certainly didn't fast for a long time, even though I knew the benefits because I saw it as tiresome and I was indulging in my, um, in my conceit, in my self-importance. But when you remove conceit and self-importance and understand that, you know, one is no more, you just, you know, my importance is nothing. It doesn't matter what I think or what I say, or who I think I am in the, in the presence of God. These are things of absolutely no consequence. And so I don't need to um, devote all my life to those things. I can devote them to a more efficient way of living. And I do believe that I am absolutely secure in my health that it will just improve until the time of my death, of course, which I cannot foresee. I'm approaching 70 years of age, and these things are in the hands of God. But until the time of death, my health, I expect my health to be good, to be very good. And if it's not, it's because I have been um, unfaithful in following correct practices, exercise, fasting, meditation on the Word of God, um, resting, sleeping, thanking God, all these things. Um, not by avoiding going to the pub or avoiding hanging out with certain people or trying to banish wicked thoughts from my mind. These are part of our lives. We can't, you know, and also they involve our brothers and sisters. So we have to be careful in that kind of shrinking from sin, as it were. But there's a great promise there in that verse. I am the Lord that healeth thee. So, of course, in the church, you know, they would have ailments and they would go to the doctor and the doctor would give them pills. Well, that's the first incorrect move, move if you have an ailment. In the Bible, the physicians don't have a very good success rate. And they knew that in the church, but nonetheless, 
the minute something serious started to happen, of course, they would go up to the hospital and have the MRI or the, you know, listen to what the white-coated people said and then start taking the medicines and then get sick. Sicker, rather than healing, as they would if they followed biblical instructions and simply stopped eating and prayed. Such is my understanding.